We all know the Space and Moon Watchers like the Omega Speedmaster, Bulliver Lunar Pilot and Seiko Pogue, and even things like the Stamansky Strela and Seconda. But did you know that there's a long heritage of digital watches in space going back to the late 70s? Let's crack on with looking into some of these seriously cool watches, there are some great ones in here. One of the relatively omnipresent watches amongst primarily Soviet-era cosmonauts was of course Electronica 5 models produced in what is now Belarus at Integral Minsk. It is oft quoted that the first digital watch in space may have been the Electronica B6202, which was apparently worn by Viktor Vizlievich Gorbatko, who was amongst the first cosmonauts and trained alongside Yuri Gagarin, and he wore it on the Soyuz 37 mission to the Salyut 6 space station in 1980, where he was accompanied by Pam Tuan, the first Vietnamese person in space. In 1984, on the Soyuz T10 mission to Salyut 7, the cardiologist research cosmonaut Oleg Atkov wore an electronic watch, and in 1985, on the Soyuz T13 mission to Salyut 7 space station, Vladimir Zanibekov wore another Electronica 5 watch. This mission was famous and immortalised into the 2017 film Salyut 7, due to it being the first instance of a dead space station being docked with and repaired. It's a pretty amazing story. On the 1988 Soyuz TM7 mission, both Commander Alexander Volkov and flight engineer Sergei Krikalev, who would later be the first cosmonaut to fly on a US space shuttle, apparently wore Electronica 5 LCD watches. They were flying alongside French spationaut Jean-Luc Cheritain, who in his prior 1982 mission had been the first Frenchman and indeed Western European in space. He seems to have enjoyed juggling Speedmasters. Fun fact was that this mission is claimed to be the first instance of a rock music album being played in space, which was Pink Floyd's live album Delicate Sound of Thunder. My final reference to an Electronica 5 worn in space, although there's many more I'm sure, is likely a 55, although sometimes claimed to be a 52B melody alarm model, was worn by Viktor Afanasiev in 1990 on board the Soyuz TM 11 to the space station Mir, which was a weird one due to its inclusion of the Japanese journalist for the Tokyo Broadcasting System, Toyohiro Akiyama. Of course, there's no escape from Omega when it comes to space watches. There was an initial flirtation with the Omega Speedmaster LCD Professional as part of the Alaska 4 program in 1978, fantastically chronicled over at OmegaLCDSpeedmaster.com, but as I understand it, it didn't ultimately make it into space. The main difference between the 12 Alaska 4 prototypes of the 1621 module that was delivered to NASA and the conventional 1620 module is its utilisation of the beta light system, which is essentially tritium tubes behind the display to light it rather than using an LED bulb. However, growing out of the original 1986 Seamaster multifunction concept and upon requests of astronauts to incorporate a digital display, buttons easy to press with clubs, electroluminescent lights, super loud and multi-purpose alarms, remember this is used in flight, and a mission time elapsed mode, the X33 model would become one of the most worn models with a digital display in both the Speedmaster Professional version and the Skywalker variant. It was first launched in 1998 using Module 1666 at Houston Space Center with a live link to the astronauts at the Mir Space Station, intended as a watch to be worn to Mars after some initial prototypes starting in 1996. Examples of wearers, of which there are far too many to list here, are Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield, who wore one on his 2012-2013 trip to the International Space Station via Soyuz TMA-07M and provided this awesome video of his X-33 floating. John Harrington liked the X-33 so much that he wore two on the Endeavour on STS-113. Richard Linehan was wearing a prototype model in 1996. The cosmonaut Sergei Zalyotin wore this X-33 to both the Mir space station and the ISS. Time and Tide got some nice pictures of Ron Garin Jr's X-33, with an inscription on the case back marking mission STS-124 in 2008. And of course, ultimate coolness is that Bob Benkin wore an old school X-33 on the SpaceX Falcon 9 flight. The Skywalker model would come out in 2014 with module 5619 containing a thermocompensated integrated circuit and which used patented technology of the European Space Agency invented by astronaut Jean-Francois Clairvoy. This is European Space Agency astronaut Alexander Gers floating in 2014, who is apparently the first to wear it in space. And while I'm here, he's also one of seriously cool Swedish Halder space module digital chronograph, which is the one on his wrist in this picture. And here is a closer up version of it. Of course, we have to refer to the boatload of different Casio models that have been worn by astronauts. A lot of these I was made aware of from an excellent Watch You Seek thread on the topic started by Rocket1991. The most unique one I've come across is the pink and yellow Casio with one of their printed straps that you would often see in the 80s and 90s. I was going mad trying to identify it and for a bit I was convinced it was an SKX1000 so huge thanks to subscriber David Rivera for letting me know that it is actually a JP200W. Incredible Casio knowledge sir. It's on the wrist of Yuri Onofri 
Yanko on the Space Shuttle Endeavour Expedition 4 to the International Space Station between 2001 to 2002. The HBX 100 was worn by Pedro Duque, a Spaniard who would go on to be the first Minister of Science for Spain, whose first space flight was in 1998 on the STS-95, and the 2003 mission Cervantes, a reference to the author of Don Quixote, the same homeland as Pedro. In a tweet on the topic, he pointed out that he had unfortunately lost it when it detached off the Velcro strap he'd been using, and it was actually vaporised during re-entry. What a shame. ProTrek has made an appearance on at least one occasion, although I'm not sure which model. Let me know in the comments if you know the watch, or indeed the astronaut. Of course, many DW5600s are worn due to being accredited by NASA with some select folks, including Canada's first man in space, Mark Garneau, STS-36 commander, John Crichton, Susan J. Helms, Expedition 2 flight engineer, and pretty much this whole Columbia crew, and there are lots more examples. Other G-Shocks worn in space include the DW5900 Three Eyes, which was worn here by Thomas Reiter. The DW6600 is worn here by Ronald Garan Jr., although technically with his Aquanaut hat on, as this was at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Aquarius Underwater Laboratory for the NASA Extreme Environment Mission Operations Project. The Mudmaster G9000 was worn by Charlie Hobar in the STS-118 in August 2007. Kimia Yui has worn a cool-looking G-Shock. I wasn't 100% sure on the model, but I hear people think it's an MTG900, and ditto for Jack Fisher. And finally, for my Cassier picks, Megan MacArthur apparently wore this Baby G, reference BG169R-AB, so even Baby G has gotten into space. Something that makes me happy as it was my first watch that was a standard Timex Ironman triathlon and it was on the wrist of an astronaut over her launch entry suit. This was the flute playing Catherine or KD Coleman of STS-73 in 1995. Anyone got any idea what the watch is that she's wearing in this video? Whilst I'm on what I think are unidentified Timexes and female astronauts, I see Karen Nyberg in numerous photos wearing this one, which I swear is a Timex of some kind, but I'm not sure. Of course, it's well established that alongside the Speedmaster and G-Shocks that the Timex Datalink was the other go-to space watch for NASA, and indeed some other space agencies as we will see. In 1996, Daniel Barry wore a Datalink 70302 on the STS-72 Endeavour, and in 1998 he wore a 69931 on STS-96 Discovery. James Newman wore the 70502 on the STS-88. Cosmonauts also got in the action with Timex Datalinks, including Yuri Gidzenko, the Expedition 1 Soyuz commander, who wore a 69931. Mikhail Turin wore the 69 721, and Sergei Krikalev on Expedition 1 wore the 78041. Probably one of the coolest models there is, often called the Astronaut for exactly this reason, but more commonly called the Rotocall, is the Seiko A829 series, with a rotating bezel for changing function, which has been worn by a few different folks. This includes Anna Lee Fisher, Kathy Sullivan wore her A829-6019 on both the STS-41 and STS-31 space missions, but also in a descent to the bottom of Challenger Deep, which means that this particular mission worn watch on screen that sold at auction for around 21,000 US dollars has been nicknamed the most vertical watch. How cool. Dutch astronaut Wubbo Ockels wore the A829A6019, Paul Desmond Scully Power also wore this watch, and Dr. Owen Garriott, father of Richard Garriott, aka Lord British, points in the comments if you know that reference, was famously a wearer of two of these models. As real life Seiko digitals outside of these models that have been worn in space are unknown to me, I'll throw in the Moonraker M3545019 memory bank calendar, which I suppose is sort of a space watch. Famously, some Breitling Navitimers have been worn in space, but from their digital portfolio, the one I've seen is Scott Kelly's Breitling Emergency, the one that has the distress signal. Amusingly, the Russians stopped him from wearing it for a period due to a concern that it may interfere with the electronics in the ship, but he wasn't too impressed by this, similar to mobile phones going off in aeroplanes. I believe he's now a Breitling Ambassador. The final watch I'll cover is a cool one in that it's the only LED one on my list. Now, Ruler of East Germany had been sending up stopwatches that were LED based in 1970 but in watch form, the famous example that a subscriber brought to my attention was made in Poland with the effort of some Japanese tech from Sanyo, which is the Unitra Varel, worn by Polish astronaut Miroslav Hermazuski on the Soyuz 30 in 1978, going to Salyut 6. Relatively recently, an updated homage to this watch has been released by the modern Polish watchmaker G. Gerlach with the Cosmonauta. And that's it for today's video. Please like if you liked, and would super appreciate any subscriptions from those of you that aren't, as I try to close in on on 1K. Let me know any models I've missed out, which I'm sure there's a truck ton. I hope you enjoyed and wish you a happy new year.